Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. I'm Rob Scribner, your host, and it's great to have you. We have had quite the week going on here. So the, the funny thing going on right now, this week for me, is Sherry is on contract doing some work for a company in Washington. So that leaves me alone <laughs> in the RV by myself, just me, Cinder, and Nikiti, and trying to stay out of trouble. The only problem with that is Sherry left me such a long list of things to do and errands to take care of and things to fix (laughs) that I don't seem to have enough time to get in trouble. So I got to admit, it's pretty quiet around here. The cat won't talk to me. Cinder's moping and I'm swamped. So (laughs) I don't know if these seven days of, I don't know if I want to even call it freedom, is a bachelor's paradise, but I do miss her. So this is probably a good time to let you know that we finally have the studio equipment set up. And I know that we're having quite a difference in our sound quality and I hope as the next few shows go along, we'll kind of tweak it in and get it working even better. But so far, uh, we can see a big improvement already just on the playbacks. So <laughs> I hope you like it. Give us your feedback. We appreciate it. So with that in mind, I also want to remind you, if you're a listener and you have some subjects you'd like us to talk about, Or if you're a vendor that has a product or service that's RV related, please contact us. The way to contact us is you can go to our website at rvtalkradio.com, go to the contact page, and just fill out the form there and tell us what's on your mind. You can also contact me directly, Rob, at rob at rvtalkradio.com. Tell us what's on your mind. If you have a product you'd like us to uh, present on here, we can talk it over and find out what will work for your company and ours. Been uh, hanging out on a few hangouts, which is kind of unusual for me. One is, I told you about in the last show, uh, the passion for RVing through uh, Three Tails RV ran by Aaron Jimerson. Uh, That's always been enjoyable. I uh, also got to do a new one with, uh, I I didn't get a chance to meet her or get her name, but the site is called Roaming RV. And it's through YouTube. And it's Canadian based. And they were running a, what they call a blab uh, chat, which is just like hangouts. And I just, I got an invitation, so I showed up. And so last week, uh, I got to hang out with some Canadians, and they're all from British Columbia, and really had a good time. And it also made me realize that we don't hear enough from our Canadian RVers out there. So I know that we have listeners from Canada, and... We would love to have you contact us if you have articles or information about RVing in Canada, issues that come up, or some really good things that the U.S. citizens should know about when they come up there. Please let us know so we can share them with our listeners. So I want to thank Roaming RV for the hospitality they gave me when I was on their hangout. It was a great hangout. It stayed RV related the entire time. And that's exactly the kind of hangout that I want to be affiliated with. 
So thank you very much. So the main theme for this show is new beginnings, new life. And when I say that, what I want to talk about is those folks that are thinking about being an RVer. So what there's so much information out there that's really easy to get hyped up about it. Then you get away from the show you're watching, the video you saw, and then all those realities of your life start hitting you. And I'm talking about somebody who's not an RVer yet and is thinking about being one because of the lifestyle. And maybe they're just fed up with the rat rays. And so what I want to talk about is the feelings, the emotions, the changes, the expectations of entering into the lifestyle of an RVer. Not only that, I want to also talk about what we feel here of the ex expectations of this show. So just like a new RVer, we're kind of new to the neighborhood. And believe me, we've listened to all the different platforms. And some of the really good ones or platforms that have been around for a long time. And some that have been RVing for a long, long time. And they're kind of, I'm going to say, in their own paradigm. And so with our show, I want to make sure that we are not caught up in the paradigm of RV lifestyle, especially as lifestyles as known as five years, 10 years ago. I'm going to have to say that those days are gone. I think there's still a lot of people living the normal RV lifestyle. And in a sense, they're in their own world and don't don't really care or don't really see the new changes coming up or coming not coming up actually happening in the RV lifestyle world so I want to make sure that why I address this I am uh, I guess an older adult so I'm at 55 I'll say that I'm I'm retired from a company but I'm not I'm still working and so is my wife. So we have a completely uh, good expectation of what you are talking about when it comes to being on the road, how to make a living, or how to enter into a world that will allow you to be in the RV or lifestyle. And I want to make sure that we keep that theme too with this show. So you will see us doing our platform a little different than other podcasts. You'll see us talk a little differently than say some of the folks that have been around a while. And the reason we want to do that is we know the workforce is changing. We know that a lot of companies now are into telecommuting and virtual work. We know there's a lot of people that are really tired of trying to play the game. And I say the game of trying to buy a house, trying to have two cars in a driveway to keep up with <laughs> the cable bill, the satellite bill, the crazy electric bill, the water bill, the gas bill, the gas for the cars, the insurance, the home repairs. Should I go on? So 
now I want to go back to what I want to originally talk about is I know there's a lot of folks out there that are on the brink of being fed up and think that maybe the RV lifestyle might be the change they want, but not without the sacrifice. Meaning that to enter into this world means to leave another world. So I'm not trying to stay with a certain age bracket. This talk or what we're talking about applies to if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, retirement age, it doesn't matter. It's still scary. It's different. It's not solid. It's not what our mother and fathers taught us to do. But <laughs> if you really think about it, unfortunately, my folks aren't around anymore. My folks would have been livid about how life is today with all this social stuff and cell phones and social network and all that. I don't, I think the best thing is to, to do is kind of ignore it and just live your life out. But Sherry and I are in between the two. So we hope and we feel that we can relate to all the folks getting into this world or trying to get into it. So we know that there's <laughs> your partner may not feel the same as you. There's concessions on both sides. You may be alone. You may have friends and family that think you're nuts. They're still caught up into the old American dream that I don't want to say it doesn't exist anymore, but to have the American dream like we were taught, a, you know, two cars in every garage is s such a big sacrifice now that we can't live um, a full life anymore. And, and so let me put that in a perspective of in the, I left a big company for quite a while and I went back and I did my last five years with that before I was able to leave them at 55. And I was gone from that company for 12 years and when I came back, I remember when I worked there before, every other person was a hunter or a fisherman, they owned a boat and they did activities, uh, camping and all these things. and. For every 10 people you met at this company, you could relate to one of them that still, you know, that did those kind of activities. When I came back, I barely met anybody that did that kind of stuff. And this is in Washington State where I grew up. Everybody did some kind of motorcycle riding, fishing, hunting, some or camping uh, and I mean there's folks that did that but uh, I was like an outsider like a redneck walking around a bunch of city slickers and and I'm just kind of putting it in perspective so for this conversation but what I noticed is the generational change and and they didn't see it but I did and the reason is because I left this company for 12 years and then came back and I saw it so clearly the world has changed to keep up on the American dream basically made for those who still want to have it, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but the sacrifice is that's all you have time to do. If you raise a family near a big city like Seattle, and this applies to all of you know, all the big cities out there, you know as well as I do that the housing is the numbers of buy, you know, to buy a decent house is incredibly expensive. Then there's the cars, 
uh, especially if both the husband and wife work, you got to have dependable equipment. And I may be talking about couples here, but even if you're single, just divide everything in half of what I'm talking about. Uh, and not to mention what a single parent has to go through because they need de uh, a single parent is doing the job of two people. Um, so to keep up with all this is so expensive now between and daycare. Oh my gosh. Daycare is, uh, I can't believe what I watch my kids go through that. And so to be able to do all that, you have to give up the amenities of the camping, the hiking, the motorcycle riding, the hunting, the fishing. You can do a little bit of it, but not like we did 10, 20 years ago. The, the young generation, well, it doesn't even have to be young generation. The generation that is working to keep up all these things. That's all they're doing. They don't see it because that's it's normal i guess i would be the not normal one anymore i just i had this 12 year i don't know twilight zone that i was on so when i came back it's just like what happened here what happened to the people and then you come across a few folks that going you know what this is totally ridiculous I work nine to five and normally everybody's doing much more than just an eight hour job between commuting because the traffic. So it takes an hour to get home and two hours to go to work or vice versa. And, and you get home, you're exhausting. You try to get dinner out and get homework done for the kids. And somewhere along the line, if you, and no wonder why divorces are up and things because we're all so darn stressed out. Suddenly this little light appears saying, or you watch a, a video or listen to a show like this one and you realize I've got to change. And the only way you're going to do that is to get rid of all this overhead, this Amer this picture of what the American dream looks like and change it to a new picture. And that picture can look like the RV lifestyle time and time again. I keep meeting people that say, I want to do this. Or, I got to find a way or I have a plan. <laughs> and so that's kind of what we're talking about here. And the thing is, if you listen to some of the folk, and this is what got me Twitter painted, <laughs> listening to folks that have been uh, already in the RV scene, you could feel their paradigm like, well, why aren't you here? This is how you do it. And, and, and they don't seem to be relating to what's really going on out there. So I want to make it clear that I know and Sherry knows, and this, this radio show knows that it's different for everyone. Why do I say that? Well, you just start thinking about it. Some folks are got young children some people's got some people have teenagers and some their kids are already moved out some people are taking care of their grandkids some people are divorced some are sick some have disabilities some cannot even comprehend why this lifestyle would be enjoyable at all they like the uh, the material things then there's the folks out there that take pride in having a really nice house and, and having lots of stuff, stuff, lots of stuff. And all of it, everything I'm talking about is okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think I just want to make sure that those people, if they're listening to this show, they're either already RVing or doing extended RVing or part-time RVing um, on the weekends and, and on vacation. And um, they're already got a hinkling of maybe this might be something I want to do. I also want to address that 
the RV lifestyle, is it the husband, you know, the retired husband and wife sitting in uh, Florida Keys, uh, kicking back in a lawn chair and having margaritas? And although that sounds really good, <laughs> the new world of RVing is all kinds of things. And I don't want to just go with the stereotype because there is professional folks. Uh, we're talking whether it's engineering or, or doing accounting and things like that, that can actually work on the road. Then there's other ones that want to live in a nice RV because some RVs are better than any house that you can afford to buy. And I know it sounds silly, but if you ever go to an RV show, take a look at a, oh, let's say a 35 foot uh, fifth wheel or 35, 40 foot uh, motorhome and look at how they're built. There's things in those RVs that you'll never have in a new house or, or a house that you can afford. So some folks, they get a really nice RV, find a, a really nice park that meets their needs and meets their uh, criteria and still do the nine to five, but come home to a beautiful RV. And then their life depends. Some folks will just leave the RV in one place and, and, and reduce their overhead significantly, which also means that they can easily uh, save money and easily contribute to their retirement and also go after the, their favorite kind of things that they like to do that whether it's, you know, hiking or biking or hunting or whatever else is out there, uh, they have the resources and the money to do what they love to do. So once again, this show is trying to let you know, we recognize all, all the different forms of RV lifestyle. So if, if this is true and you're interested in looking into the lifestyle, the first thing I, I'd have to tell you to do is what do you want? What do you need and what's going to fit you with the circumstances that you have in your life? And there's usually a solution for most of them. And of course, just like anything, some people can't afford to buy a house, so they rent one. Some people don't rent a house, they rent an apartment. While same thing with RVs, you may not be able to go into this world and meet all the things that you need. Maybe you're taking care of an elderly mother or father that has medical issues and things like that. Um, it could be very difficult to get into this lifestyle. So I don't want to say that I have an answer for all of it. I'm just trying to stimulate your thoughts. So the first thing, of course, is to define what are you going to do for the next year? What do you think you're going to do in the next three years? What are you going to do in the next five years? Now with Sherry and I, we took the approach of planning ahead and having a clear definition of what we wanted to do. So if you go to RV Travel Buddy and go to the videos and look at the playlist, we have what's called the mission series. And the mission series is, is designed for those people with the vision of becoming an RVer. And just because Sherry and I are uh, at an older age than some folks that may be listening to the show, so much of it applies. So if you have a vision to get into the RV lifestyle, then, and then you may have an analytical side, like I need to plan this out. I want to see how this is going to work. Set yourself a goal, whether it's a one-year plan, 
a two-year plan, a five-year plan. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It, we're not telling you to drop everything right this minute and get into the RV lifestyle. And the show is certainly not telling you that it's life, RV lifestyle or nothing. It's RV lifestyle if you can and if you wish to. But never will you hear from us looking... Uh, <laughs> criticizing someone who doesn't want to come into this lifestyle there you know even my kids is like i'd prefer to see them in a house right now and, and doing all that stuff but if they decided to start pursuing this uh lifestyle i'd certainly ask them have you thought out you know have you planned it out well and that's really what it's all about so plan, think it over, change your plans, think it over, start working towards your plan. But um, one of the other things I do is I have another show called Paradigm Chimes. And what that it really is, is talking about Paradigm Chimes and Law of Attraction. And uh, what it is, is and what I'm suggesting on this show is from this point on, if this is a lifestyle that you'd like to consider, you need to start changing your paradigms a little bit. That means that maybe living in a, a house with wheels isn't a step down, but a step up. And throw, I guess the best thing would be is start talking to people, start listening to shows like this, start watching videos. There's endless shows to watch and uh, education in this area of RV living. It's endless and start listening to all the different scenarios of the, the folks doing shows. There's young ones. There's middle-aged folks. There's kind of like late middle-aged folks like me and Sherry. And then there's the ones that are retired already. And so you just got to find out which ones you kind of relate to and see what fits you best. And, and we haven't even talked about so many families now with children are moving over to the homeschooling now because the, the quality of public schools. And I want to get into that debate, but it is an issue. And depending on where you live and where you're from, the school systems can be <laughs> not very adequate. And so homeschooling is a better choice for a lot of families, which fit into the RV lifestyle really well. So I hope uh, what we're talking about here uh, doesn't confuse you more, but um, embrace you with the fact that, yeah, your your scenario is different than mine. And you need to find a way to make it work for you. And the best thing I can suggest, and anybody could suggest, is like I, like I teach in Law of Attraction, you need to start living the vision. And law of attraction says when you start thinking a certain way, the universe will start working in your favor. We'll just put it like that. So start watching shows. Go meet people. Go to RV parks. Nice ones. Not the ones that I know you have a stereotype of what those are like. RV parks can be awesome. Go to RV shows, look at RVs, touch and feel an RV, try to rent an RV for a weekend if you've never had one before, and find out if it really is the kind of lifestyle that would, um, that could work for you. And you might find out it may not, and that's what all this is about, but the 
the chance for a new beginning, a new life, and you still have some of the old life, your American dream can be wonderful. It just doesn't require a garage with two cars in front of it anymore. But we're trading it off for uh, freedom, less stress, less overhead, that lower bills. If you do it right and you make the kind of income that uh, would normally require you be required for the city living, can you imagine how much money you could save for retirement? Could you imagine some of the things that you wish you could do again because you didn't have enough money to do it before? Those are all within your reach now. So that's just a lot of food for thought. It's kind of deep stuff. I understand that. And that's what this show is all about. And I urge you to send us comments and feedback, questions that you'd like us to address on this show that would help you in a trans transition to possibly being an RVer or a living in an RV lifestyle. And I hope I, de I define that lifestyle past the, the stereotype that's probably in your head. And I know that stereotype's there because I just came from a big company where most of the people thought I was nuts. And I can guarantee you I'm not. Well, maybe. I could be. No, I think I'm not nuts. I've just been exposed to a different world, a different paradigm. A paradigm basically is a, it's like a habit. And it is, it's, a lot, it's a way you've been taught, a way I've been taught. And so when you start changing those habits, those things you're taught that you thought was the right thing to do that came from a generation back, when you start changing those paradigms, you'll suddenly realize the new paradigm can be amazing. And that's what we call a paradigm shift. So I hope that was helpful. And I really hope we get some feedback and comments, constructive, I hope, of how we could address this old lifestyle in a broad way, because it's not just grandma and grandpa in a motorhome going to Florida. It's so much more now. And we see that and we know that. So give us a holler. We'd love to hear from you. Well, now I want to bring this down to a little personal level of uh, living the lifestyle that Sherry and I have finally had the chance to start traveling. And yes, we work, but I, I want to talk about some of the discoveries we've had in the last month and a half since we've actually been able to be mobile. Now, we were in our RV before that, uh, four months before we actually could travel, just getting prepared to travel and getting our conditions right. And one of the things that my wife has brought up several times, and this is pretty special to me to hear, is we were in the rat race. I mean, we're talking rat race. As you get up, I got up 4.30 every morning. I did my thing. Sherry got up a few hour, an hour or two after me. She put in long hours. I put in my hours. She'd get home five, six in the evening. We'd try to get dinner ready and take care of errands and, and feed the dog and all that stuff. And it was just like, la da 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 da. I am so tired. La da 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 da. I am so tired. It just, whatever, you know, it just, you know. And so we, Sherry and I were definitely, just like we talked about early in the show, there's got to be a change. We got to make a change. We're going to die, die here. This is too much. But the one thing my wife has been saying ever since we started doing this, and this really means a lot. She's been saying, I have never laughed 
so much in the last month and a half than the dozens of years that we've been doing this grind. And I mean, <laughs> I mean laugh. The kind of laugh that I don't know how many, how many times has happened to us lately is I think because the stress is gone that you laugh so hard that you can't breathe, that you laugh so hard that you're coughing because your body doesn't even know how to handle that kind of laughing anymore. That kind of laugh that when you get done laughing, you start laughing again because it was just fun because you're laughing so much and your eyes are watering. I don't, I, I just can't express, I can't even tell you why some of those things uh, made us laugh so much, but we know that we're doing the right thing. We know that we are doing the right thing spiritually. And I'm not saying that in a religious way. I truly think that we've found out a way of life that's probably going to give us a few more years. I think we're going to live a little longer now. I think this is what life was supposed to be like, as at least with my partner. We have been married 35 years, and we're now discovering <laughs> our old selves. We have really had some fun things happen. And it's because we took the chance. And I, when we, I say take the chance, my wife probably was more reluctant than I was. To, to, I was the pusher to go into this lifestyle. She's conservative and, and uh, analytical, and uh, it's going to make sense to her. And she had to uh, have some faith in me to do this. And oh my goodness, all I can say is our last month and a half has just been amazing. We've rediscovered ourselves. We've rediscovered friendships. We, we have missed out on friendships for years because all we could do is work nine to five. Never had time to meet people. And now we're trying to figure out how to be good friends to other people. It's like, how, I know it sounds funny to some people, but how do you be a friend? How do you, you even have to, you have to work a little bit to be a friend, I've noticed, uh, to take time to talk to your friends and, and, and maybe go have dinner with them and maybe you won't get something done. And uh, it's been nice. It's been really nice. But there's other parts of this lifestyle that's also new, kind of exciting also, but you leave one stress for another in a way and 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 the kind that you have with RV living is to learn how to deal with issues that come up with the RV or your it depends what kind of RV you're using maybe your support car or your main truck that's pulling your trailer or fifth wheel and problems come up and so the next thing you, you have to learn is how to look at these issues as not problems, but obstacles. There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be things that happen. And so the big part is learning how to deal and cope with them and not get so frustrated or upset, but also Sherry and I learned well from folks before we started to be prepared for it. So please, I mean, if you're going to enter into this world, you also need to realize things are going to break and things are going to happen uh, from breakdowns to being towed to uh, repairs on the RV. For, if anything, and I, I don't like to say this, but apply for a credit card and don't use it. But keep it on hand for emergency. I, I mean, 
there'll be stress in, involved by putting something on credit, obviously, but it's less stress uh, for if you have to depend on having enough in your wallet. If that's enough to keep you from going insane, then I suggest that's what you do. So Sherry and I, we set aside funds to be prepared for problems. And it really comes down to we can handle the problems. The big part is taking responsibility for safety. And so a lot of our shows, we talk about checklists and, and procedures and safety. And I really think that's the biggest obstacle in this lifestyle is not the breakdowns and not the uh, uh, expenses for doing that stuff. It is a pain and it is stressful. But the worst thing out there, the most evil thing out there in RV lifestyles is safety. And if you don't take that serious, this lifestyle won't be any fun. It could actually end all fun altogether. So anyway, those are just a few things that I think that Sherry and I can pass on to you to look forward to, but also take serious that this new beginning, this new life that you're considering or have entered into, that we're all in it together and it's different for all of us, but all of us have some things in common that maybe one or two things that I brought up in this show will help you. And maybe just the fact we're talking about our relationships with our partners, that that'll help you communicate better as a couple or a friend or partner to get through the obstacles. And that's all they are is obstacles. So anyway, I'll kind of leave it at that. I, I this is not, I hope I don't sound like I'm preaching. I'm just happy when I do this show and I talk about RV lifestyle and, and, and our show and the people we met, I'm smiling. And I'm hoping when you're watching this show or listening to this show or watching our videos that you're smiling too and can feel that that happiness that we've got and also realize that we are in a re we do understand the reality of the real world that if you're in the outside looking in there's not just one path to this there's dozens if not hundreds of different paths to enter into the RV living lifestyle so with that in mind, I want to thank you very much for listening to RV Talk Radio. I urge you to subscribe to our podcast through your cell phone. Uh, you just get a free app and then you just go to iTunes and look for uh, RV Talk Radio. Our show is on every Monday. We launch it in the morning. You can take all week to listen to the show. Um, once again, I got to urge you to please make comments, ask us questions, give us feedback, constructive feedback, please. And I want to urge everybody out there, whether you're an RV or not, please be safe. And now you understand why I say that. So from RV Talk Radio, I'm Rob Scribner. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye now.